Good morning, friends. Welcome to Temecula United Methodist Church. My name is Drew Davis, and if you are here as a visitor today, thank you for blessing our space with your presence today. We have a few visitors that I've gotten the names of, and I'll, I'll honor some uh, requests and not embarrass you today. I'll preach in the sermon and embarrass myself, so it'll just we'll, we'll turn it this way. But I am just so blessed to have everyone here, and, it's, and welcome. Please, if, if you're able, stand together and pass the peace with those around us. Okay, Corey. Oh, no, 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 no. The other one. The other one. Good morning. Please remain standing in body or spirit and join me in our call to worship. Look, here is our God, the one we have waited for. Even, Even in times of trial, we will be glad and rejoice in our salvation. Come feast on rich food and dine on fine wine as the Lord wipes away our tears. We will, we will claim the blessings of the Lord. And, and the, the bounty, bounty of Christ's, Christ's table. Come, let us worship the Lord. Amen. Amen. And as everyone's being seated, I'd like to ask my friends to come and join me, my young friends, any young friends, come on and sit with me. How are you? Good? Today is a very special day. Today is World Communion Sunday. Do you see the table behind us? with the bread and the juice today yes okay <laughs> the answer is yes but ask your mom first okay so today is world communion sunday today all around the world the first sunday of October, the entire world right now that celebrates communion is celebrating communion. Can you believe that you are doing something that someone's also going to do today in Australia or in 
Europe or in Africa, all around the world, we are all going to be united in the same actions and celebrating the, the blessings that comes through Christ's love through communion. So all the way around the world, imagine, even in the cross. Imagine asking. the star I did before six creating the cross. Yes, it's like the, the Christmas star. You knew you you learned that before I did. <laughs> so even with all of our symbols, today we're gonna celebrate a symbol of love, and you might even learn a little bit about it in Sunday school. So let's pray together. Precious God, be with us as we learn about your love. Amen. Now you're going to follow Mr. Steve. He's waving at you. You'll follow him to Sunday school. So on your mark, get set, go. I didn't prepare for the exam before class today. (laughs) We're going to run through a few announcements this morning. Uh, here in a couple of weeks on October the 20th, if you're interested in joining the church, learning more about the church, learning more about me, we're going to have a special gathering right after the worship service on October the 20th, and we'll meet in the, the, the fellowship hall. So uh, please uh, uh, email me and let me know so that we can have some uh, refreshments and so forth ready for that. Also... Uh, on October the 17th, just a couple of days before that, we'll have our special gathering uh, from the uh, founder and director of Project Touch to share about the work that they do. Also, we are going to have in, on uh, November the 13th, it's a Wednesday, if you come to our Bible study, we're going to have Bible study at 10 o'clock. We'll finish Bible study at 1130 and have lunch after that. And then we'll have a very special presentation about uh, a work that's being done for healthy aging and care of, of dementia. So if you're interested in that and are free, please come. And uh, 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 just a very, um, it'll be informative. It's, we've been through stuff in our family, and I wish that I had a conversation about this before we went through it with our grandparents and sorts. So... Uh, Please come if you're free at that time. Uh, We're going to move into our time of prayers and start with our prayer quilt today. And at the end of the service, please uh, go out to the uh, to the breezeway, and this will be set up for you to share prayers and tie knots as well. And our prayer quilt today is not on here. Oh, here it is. Here it is. Is prayers for Logan and Kara Lee. Uh, so uh, prayers for comfort, healing, and blessings. Precious and loving God, please be with this prayer quilt and those who will receive it. Please bless them and give them healing and comfort on their journeys. Amen. We'll move into our time of communi- community prayers. Is there any prayers today? Okay. Any prayers? Yes, sir. Yes. Yeah, and um, uh, please pray for Maureen, who had a, not only had a fall, but had some pretty bad swelling and everything. It's uh, some healing. Any other prayers? Yes, sir. Sarah's dad, who's in the hospital. Yes, ma'am. Yes, there's weather all over. It's coming back, I hear. Yes. Oh, well, I hope that, I hope that that's a safe travel as well. Any others? Yes, sir. Yes, please.
Absolutely. Thank you, Art. If you go to our uh, YouTube page and our uh, Facebook page on Friday, I have already recorded a special sermon for National Coming Out Day that will be on those pages on Friday. So please go and view those. Please share those with your friends and community as well. As we continue in our time of prayer, we also take a moment to pray for all the unspoken prayers, as we know that those that are unspoken sometimes are the deepest and the hardest to journey with. So let's join together in prayer. Precious and loving God, within all these things be. And people who are looking for your presence, be present. Precious God, for those who long to experience your touch, be real. Precious God, with all these journeys, even the ones that are held secret and sacred, be. In your Son's precious name I pray, amen. Now just before we move into the anthem today, my dear friend is on on deck and ready to go. We need to celebrate one thing. I would like to ask Daisy Anderson to come forward, please. And I'll meet you down on the floor. There's a lot up here. Daisy is going to join the church with us today. And as we move into this time of of membership, we need to pray for another dear friend who was also going to join the church with us today, but is still healing uh, from surgery for a broken femur and is moving into a time of uh, physical therapy. And that's our dear friend Dorothy. So let's continue in prayers for Dorothy as well. If you'd like to join in this time of conversation, it's on page 38. And on page 38, there's some parts for the congregation. There's a part for you that you'll just repeat with me as we uh, celebrate uh, Daisy joining the community. Already active with uh, the quilting and uh, playing a French horn and handbells and and a Saturday a regular Saturday night attender too and all the good stuff. So uh, starting on page uh, 38, we're going to start on number 15. As members of Temecula United Methodist Church, will you faithfully participate in this ministry by your prayers, your presence, and your gifts and your service, if you will, please say, I will. Members of the household of God, I share with you, Daisy, to your love and your care, do all in your power to increase her faith, confirm her hope, and perfect her in love. Please join together with me. We give thanks for all that God has already given you, And we welcome you in Christian love as members together with you in the body of Christ and in this congregation of the United Methodist Church, we renew our covenant faithfully to participate in its ministries of the church by our prayers, our presence, our gifts, and our service that in everything God may be glorified through Jesus Christ. Amen. So welcome to our community. And here's uh, uh, some things to remember it. And everybody, please welcome Daisy. Thank you.
Our scripture today comes from Isaiah, chapter 25, verses 6 through 9. On this mountain, the Lord Almighty will prepare a feast of rich food for all peoples, a banquet of aged wine, the best of meats, and the finest of wines. On this mountain, he will destroy the shroud that enfolds all peoples, the sheet that covers all nations. He will swallow up death forever. The sovereign Lord will wipe away the tears from all faces. He will remove his people's disgrace from all the earth. The Lord has spoken. In that day they will say, Surely this is our God. We trusted in him and he saved us. This is the Lord. We trusted in him. Let us rejoice and be glad in his salvation. May God bless and expand our understanding of this word. Thank you. Let's join together in prayer. Precious and loving God, thank you for being. Your presence that is sometimes not seen but still is. Your presence that is seen and we react to. Your presence that we combine with at times, even when we're not aware of it. Precious God, thank you. Be with us today. Be with me today. Be the words. Amen. Thank you for coming today. Every time I stand up here, you know, before I forget, i got to ask you a favor. I'm going to give you an email. If you could get her to give me a study guide or something. She always asks the best questions. And there's, there is a beauty in that, in that awe of wanting to know and wanting to understand. And she keeps me on my toes every Sunday. So if you could send me a study guide or something, I won't let her down on, on her questions. I am just moved by that awe and that want of to learn other things. And sometimes she stumps me so bad, I'm worried that she thinks that I don't like her questions. And I'm just embarrassed I can't answer them yet. But it fills my soul to have those questions every week. So tell her the preacher said good stuff. As we share good stuff about being in awe and wanting to know more about the presence of the Holy Spirit today in this room. Today is um, World Communion Sunday. Today, every Christian church that practices the actions of the Holy Eucharist are doing so very intentionally today with the understanding whether that we proclaim that we are Episcopal or Presbyterian or Methodist or Baptist or Roman Catholic, what have you, today, within the bonds of a Holy Spirit that transcends all differences, today, we are all doing so together. And our many different varying journeys, we are doing so together. In our many varying different celebrations, we are doing so together. And within the luggage and the pain and the hurts that we experience, we are doing so together. One of the phrases that I commonly forget during our practice of communion here is a reminder for one and all. In the United Methodist Church, we serve an open table. Now, this is what an open table means. No matter if this is your first time or your one millionth time in this building, you're welcome to come to the table. Whether that this is your first time that you heard someone stand up and talk about the Holy Spirit as an all-uniting thing that works its way past division and harm to create unity and peace, you are welcome to the table. 
no matter how crazy your Saturday night was and how many headaches that you have this morning, you are welcome to the table. I love the practice of the open table of Holy Communion because not only does it proclaim no matter what journey you're on, you're welcome, but it proclaims a reality that even if we feel disconnected, there is a place to connect. If we feel forgotten and ignored, we are not forgotten forgotten and ignored by God. Even in the moments of shame and worry, we're welcome, and especially in moments of praise and celebration, we're welcome. As we do so within our differences within denominations, we still stand with a Holy Spirit that transcends the boundaries and creates unity. That's what we're celebrating today. Last week, I asked our dear community to complete a sentence for me. And as we participate in Holy Communion within our celebrations, one of the things that we bring with us is our acknowledgement of who God is. Last week I shared with you the phrase that I put in as my salutation in every email, God is love. But God is so many different things for so many different varying people for so many different reasons. I think of a quote from Dave Grohl, who is the lead singer of my and my daughter's favorite rock band, the Foo Fighters. He once talked about music in the sense that music is the only thing that one person can sing to 80,000 people and they can sing back to them for 80,000 different reasons. I think about that quote as we proclaim who God is. God is love, is the Abba, patient, far, distant. Even in the troubling words, there is in the middle of the presence, even if it doesn't feel close. Grace, God is a muse, God is a healer. God is always talking. When we come and celebrate Holy Communion, we bring these words of celebration with us. We carry these words in so many different ways. And as we walk forward, we come with an acknowledgement of celebration. Thank you, God, for being who you are for me. Just like a song. A hundred people walk forward with a hundred different reasons to celebrate a common sustaining grace. So we come forward in our celebrations. And when we come forward in our celebrations, it's the easiest path to follow. We look forward to saying thank you. But I want to share with you too, there is a connection within this act that exists even in places that we feel afraid or hurt. I want to share with you today, and Art has already opened the door for me with the facts and figures. There's so many different journeys that the church has created some of the distance and the far away feelings. I want to share in other ways, as I was preparing for the sermon this week, I started to look at the scriptures in which Christ talks about divorce. And it exists in two different sections, in Matthew and Mark. One says divorce is wrong, and in the other it says divorce is long unless. And I think about how frequently some may be locked into the wrong, but we forget that it is also listed And it also reads, unless. Sometimes we exist in lives of absolutes, and it's those absolutes that make the song that we sing more sustainable. But when we sing our songs, when we sing in our response, when we join in those 80,000 voices and add our part to that harmony, our expression is heard by others who are suffering from 
the words that we celebrate. And it doesn't make it bad that we celebrate those words, but it does create the real challenge that we have to hold on to, that when we are on a journey, we are not just trying to get somewhere for ourselves, but sometimes we need to slow down our pace and go back for others who feel left behind. I shared with you within these two scriptures, it's easier to pick the one that supports the journey that I'm on so that I can get to the finish line. I can get lost in the Apostle Paul's words of finishing the race all the way to the end, but the race that we are on is not one that has a gold medal for one person waiting at the finish line. Sometimes we have to remember in the beautiful videos that we see sometimes from the Special Olympics, that sometimes there's a dear friend in a foot race and they fall down and the entire competition stops and turns around to pick them up and to make it possible that they can cross the finish line as well. And it's through that understanding, through that turning around and going back, that it makes it possible for dear friends that may have only heard the words from Matthew and really needed to hear the words from Mark, when they had to care for some very scary moments of abuse and harm in their lives. We need to remember the words of 1 Corinthians and maybe not so much of Leviticus at times as we celebrate the reality that when Christ said what matters the most is to love your neighbor as you love yourself, that is the race. It's not following the rules sometimes to a T so that we fit in to society and we feel accepted for ourselves. Sometimes the greatest thing that we can... Sorry. Sometimes the greatest thing that we can do with our faith is to intentionally put ourselves in places of discomfort so that we can grab the hands of someone that is feeling low down and say, you're loved. You're loved. I'm going to say something right now, and there's no way I'm going to get out of it now. So on Friday... in honor of putting myself in a place of discomfort to hold hands with other friends to help them see that we are on the same path, the same journey, and we're trying to get to the same finish line. I drive to work a lot. If y'all get mad at me, Adam's right there, go tell him. I get to work a lot and I get mad about seeing my Christ misrepresented. I really do. So on Friday, as a part of National Coming Out Day, I'm going to come out as an ally. And I got my glitter and my markers. And I'm going to stand at the duck pond and show a sign. That it's radically different than what people drive by every day. Because it's important. Unfortunately, there's a lot of friends that don't want to come here because out of the 80,000 voices, there's one voice that's singing off key. So I'm going to take my tuner out on Friday. I'll be down there from 7.30 to 9 if you want to yell at me. Other people will be. (laughs) But that's what this journey is about. When we get to this moment of World Communion Sunday, we think about the reality that there is something that we love. We love it. It's so important to our lives that we give up sleeping in on Sunday mornings to learn about it. 
There's something important about it that we come and we play silly board games and, and have spaghetti and pizza and talk about family legacies on Saturday night to be a part of it. There's something so special about it that we invite our friends to come apart and be a part of it. We go to a restaurant on a, on a Thursday afternoon and become the loudest group in the room and watch our dear friend devour a strawberry sponge cake. Oh my gracious. That wasn't me. <laughs> okay, it was me. <laughs> but there's something that's so deep and per- crucial about this that it is important. But we hear that off key note sometimes and we don't want to join the chorus. But every voice has to be in the chorus so that the song sounds beautiful. Now, I know my man Dave Grohl has made some mistakes, but I still hold on to that phrasing. I think very frequently about those 80,000 voices singing back for 80,000 different reasons, and all of them are important, and sometimes I have to turn my singing part down so I can hear the songs of, of the other voices. That's what this is about. One of the blessings that I have is I get to watch. I'm up here. I get to watch you take communion. And sometimes I see the smiling faces. And sometimes I see the tears as somebody takes communion. There's another thing that I see, and I want you to know right now it's okay, and I see you, and I pray for you. And it's okay. Sometimes as I'm sitting up here and watching, I see the dear souls that are still on the journey that aren't there yet. And I see the place to pass by. And I want you to hear the guy up front in the white robe say, it's okay. It's okay. Because if you're not there yet, you're still here. And I hope that while you're in this room, that you hear the love and, and healing and Abba and patience and the healer and the muse speak to you. And it's okay that you're not there. But all those things are still real. Because even though sometimes somebody sings off key, there's still a beautiful song playing somewhere. Hold on to those things as we shift into our time of communion right now. Hold on to those things as the ushers come forward to help me out as we share communion with you. If you've got a celebration today, I'm going to see that big smile. If you are carrying some baggage with you today, I'm going to see the tears. And if you ain't there yet today, it's okay. Because you're here. And that's all that matters. There is one person in the choir that's listening to your song. And even though other songs come out off-key, even though mine comes out off-key at times, I'm still listening to your song. And you are loved. And you have a healer. And you are hope. And you are real. And you're talking in a very special way and God's listening to you. Dear friends, come on. If you want to read along, we're going to open the hymnals to page 13. For the great thanksgiving. Can make pockets in this thing. All right. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and a joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, God Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. 
and so with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and we join in their unending hymn, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you and blessed is your Son, Jesus Christ. By the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church, delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant of water and spirit. On the night in which Christ gave himself up for us, he took the bread, he broke the bread, he gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is broken for you. As often as you take it, do it in remembrance of me. And on that evening he also took the cup. He shared the cup with those around him and said, Drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. As often as you drink it, do it in remembrance of me. And so in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith that Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and cup. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ that we may be the body of Christ for the world until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at His heavenly banquet. Through Your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit and Your Holy Church, all honor is Yours, Almighty God, now and forever. Amen. And now with the confidence of faith, we share the words that Christ taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be Thy name. Thy kingdom come, Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For Thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Please remember in this time as we share these gifts, if you come here in celebration, you're welcome. If you come here in pain, you're welcome. If you come here and you're not there yet, you are welcome. No matter where you are in this place, we are blessed that you are in this place.
Lord Jesus Christ given for you. So we move into our time of, of special giving. Uh, our gifts will go towards the World Communion Sunday for the annual conference. I know that they are collecting funds in many different ways, especially with the effects of the hurricanes and so forth. So these gifts will be used to help in different needs for the golden baskets. Gracious and loving God, please use these gifts to make your voices of love much louder in the chorus of life. Amen.
as we move into our time of benediction, I just want to share with you one more time the beautiful challenge of listening to every voice in the chorus. I want you to hear maybe at some times that there's some minor keys around you that need to be heard a little bit more. I want maybe that there's someone singing at a slower tempo that needs you to be aware of them. And then sometimes the loudest fortes of praise are covering those pianos that need to be seen and heard. Be in all those places. God is love. Amen.